models arrived at Selhurst Pond yesterday, sent tons wagging over the major news story to rock the club this week. Monaco's interest in taking Hoddle to France as manager following his successful spell there as a player in the 1980s. Not very happy at the moment, really. I mean, he's just come to Chelsea, he's done well, got to the cup final first, first year. Europe, I mean, what's the point of him being here, I mean? Well, I think it's a lot of it's just uh, media talk, I think. Just as after a manager, they're just sort of linked up with Hoddle because uh, his previous links with the club and that, but don't necessarily sort of believe everything you read. You see, Chelsea have a reputation of getting rid of their managers down the years, haven't they? Uh, Ken ain't going to get rid of uh, Glenn. He knows what he's doing, so without a doubt, Glenn's going to do the job. No, he never goes. He never leaves. Well, I think he's not the sort of man that will, you know, he's just signed a contract and whatever, he keep to it. I think he loves the club as well. Supporters. Following defeats against title chasing Newcastle and Blackburn, Chelsea must have felt that Crystal Palace were a more realistic hope of taking three points. But Chelsea laboured for long periods against a Crystal Palace team, still looking for their first victory of the new season. The goalless and error strewn first half, Paul Thurlong, the game's outstanding contributor, scored five minutes into the second period. It was his fourth goal since his expensive move from Watford in the summer. Chelsea should have taken the game over the brow of the hill when Peacock's skill wasn't matched by David Brocastle's wasteful finish. On the final whistle, Chelsea and Glenn Hoddle were celebrating their first win at Palace in ten years, their first win in the league this month. The only disappointing thing 